Hi, I'm Chai Teck. I'm a Deputy Director in PUB's Coastal Protection Department. This is a new mission that PUB has been looking into to ensure that Singapore remains adequately protected against the challenge posed by sea level rise. We hit the streets to ask Singaporeans questions about rising sea levels. Then, we had Mr Ho address these responses and debunk any misconceptions. By 2100, mean sea levels are expected to rise by 1 metre. What do you think will happen to Singapore? Then, maybe we start building roads and houses above sea level. Um, like, I think like one, me one metre is not, not so high. Like. Based on the latest science, we understand that sea level will rise by up to a metre by year 2100. A metre is not really a lot, okay? I mean, am I sitting down? It's about to here, right? Uh, but when you look at it in combination with other factors, Singapore has a large tidal range, right? Uh, more than three metres. Right. And we do have storms hitting our shore. Right. When there are sustained winds blowing from the South China Sea, water levels in Singapore will build up. So when you add all this up together, you find that low-lying areas in Singapore could be affected. What do you think is causing sea levels to rise? The heat. Then in the Antarctic, the ice will melt. Then it will increase the sea level. Temperature rise. Then at the cold country, then the ice melt. So the sea level rise. I think the key thing about why sea level will rise is because of build-up of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. So that traps the heat in our atmosphere and because of this, the ambient temperature rises. And correctly, as what some of them said, when temperature rise, your ice caps and your North Pole and South Pole ice sheets will start melting and thereby introduce more water into the ocean body and that's, and that's why we have more water in the sea. Is sea level rise something that you worry about now? See, I'm, I'm uh, you know, middle-aged, I'm, I'm okay. It's my son, he has to be more worried about it. It's, it's uh, you know, I, I think our generation, my generation should be okay. It's the next generation that, that's going to really feel the pain. Actually, it's quite true that the younger generation tends to be more concerned and think more about this because they know that it will affect either them or their f future generations. How much of an impact do you think sea level rise will have on your life? Like next time if like it rises very high, we need to swim to school or like row a boat to school. This part will be submerged. Yeah. Uh, then you won't have any like you know greens. Yeah. But that's the worst case scenario. When we say that 30% of Singapore is not more than five meters above mean sea level, we're referring to a size of an area of about 200 square kilometers approximately. To give a perspective, what 200 square kilometers is, is about 45 Sentosas put together. As you know, Singapore is completely surrounded by water, right? There's nowhere to run. Water will just find its way around the whole of Singapore's coastline. So other countries with similar nature like Singapore, which I meant the small island nations, will have this problem as well. What do you think can be done to deal with rising sea levels? Yeah, I think education is probably the way to go. And, and, and also, uh, the government take the lead in terms of the sustainability effort. First, we need to understand how sea level rise could affect our low-lying areas and along the coast. Right? So, in this respect, we are developing the coastal inland flood model to simulate what happens when storms come, when tides come, when sea level rises, coupled with heavy rains. Don't forget we have severe rainfalls or storms hitting our uh, inland areas as well. The second initiative is of course we need to understand different parts of Singapore, what are the unique characteristics. And based on this, we see how we can best develop and design solutions that best fit the local conditions. Hence, we are coming up a number of site-specific studies, first starting with the southeastern coast, and JTC is also looking at Jurong Island. The third strategy is, of course, to ensure that our requirements for the long term remains well safeguarded. For a start, we identify key infrastructure that needs to be functional for a longer period. Hence, you realise that critical infrastructure like Changi Airport Terminal 5 and the Tuas Megaport are built or reclaimed land that is 5 metres above the mean sea level already. 
So these are preemptive measures that we take while they are carrying out studies uh, along the way. What are some things that individuals can do to help protect our coastlines? I think as individuals, I, I, you know, again, I, I don't want to talk about governments. As individuals, we can do our best, you know, save electricity, try to recycle, try to reuse. As individuals, we must do our part to ensure that we contribute to this uh, green movement to reduce carbon emissions to the environment as best as we can by increasing our recycling rate. Even simple things like using less water. The water that you use from your tap is treated. This requires energy. This coupled with all our individual efforts like reducing wastage of food, uh, reducing your carbon footprint, drive less, cycle more or even walk more. At the same time, let's do all our part not to litter around Singapore. Can you swim? <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> In my younger years, I can swim 30 laps non-stop. <laughs>